Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of solving problem statements using Java. So before I get into these implementation part, let's just see how I have, I have organized these all problem statements. So as I have said in the uh, introduction video, I have put every program source code in the in my GitHub repository. So let me just show you how I have made it. So if you go to my GitHub repository, that is github.com slash Akhil Kokni, that is my name, you'll see a pinned repository called Solving Problem Statements in Java. So just click on it and you will see several programs, that is program one and program two. So during recording of this video, I have put two programs in my repository. So when you find it, there may be several programs. So for this video, we are going to solve the first problem statement. So if you click on that folder or the link, you will see that there are two parts. So according to the problem statements that which we are going to solve, they have at least two parts or more than that. So according to that, I have segregated the uh, problem statements and their code into several different parts. So here program one contains two parts. I have put part A in one file, part B in second file. So if you click on the part A, which we are going to solve the first, you will see the entire source code which we will be implementing here even with appropriate documentation. So with that said, let's just look into what the problem statement is actually. So let me just read it for you guys. Create a Java class called student with the following details as variables within it, which are USN, name, branch, phone number. So we need to create a class. We need to create a class which is named student and it needs to contain four variables like USN, name, branch, phone number, which are basically the student details. Then after that, we need to create a Java program, which will create n student objects and print the details which are from student class. So it's as easy as we read it. So it's very simple. So before we begin, uh, we are going to declare two classes here. That is first one part A and another one will be public class let's just call it student okay in the first class we are going to define the main function from this class we are going to invoke the java program so let's just uh, ignore it now and uh, come to the actual logic and functionality of the program so as they have said we need to create a java class called student we have created it and put the following details as variables within it so let's just create variables. First one is the USN. Next is name. Next is branch. And phone number obviously will be integer format. So with that said, next comes is the add function. So to add the details and to store the uh, Student details, we are going to create an add function, which is of void type. We are not going to return anything. So let's just name it add function, which will take four parameters. That is the student details itself. Here in this case, let's just name it uh, short. So string u for usn, n for name, p for branch, and ph for phone number. So for assigning these parameter values to the <coughs> actual class global variables, you are going to use the statements this dot usn equal to u. So what this basically does is this particular um, keywords access the address of the usn that is the global variable and this variable values will be placed into the class global variable let's just repeat it for the another three as well next is n that is name and another two would be phone number next last second one is branch so that's it that's the add function now next comes is the um Next comes is once we have added the student details, we need to display the student details in the terminal. That's where we are going to execute it. So we need another public. We are not going to return. So we are going to use 
white as a data type return data type next we'll keep it uh, name of the function as display we are not going to take any parameters so to display the student details we are going to we are not going to use the normal system dot out dot print ln we are going to do something different so that will be system dot out dot format so here in my code if you scroll down to the bottom here you will see I have used a statement like system dot out dot format so what this basically does is it prints the appropriate appropriate details in a formatted way so let me just explain it to you how in this case will it work that is first it will print the string so this is referred to the USN that is university seat number next comes is percentage 20 years now you might wonder what is this 20 years what this basically does is first it prints the USN next before printing the name what this basically does is it's add it adds 20 paddings so you can think it off as uh, 20 white spaces okay so it will print 20 white spaces first then after that it will print the name and this repeats for the rest of the cases as well that is the branch and for integer we are going to use 20 D so it's that simple <coughs> let's just that uh, repeat that yes percentage 20 yes for name 20 yes and percentage 20 D now this dot USN this dot name this dot branch and this dot phone number so that's it that's the student class as per this problem statement next comes is the main function so before we get into the main function as you can see we have made a small error here that is even for the branch we are we are assigning the usn variable so let's just change it to b so <clears throat> now let's just get into the main function so let me just tell you in an abstract manner how the main function will be working so first we are going to print a menu to the user after printing a menu to the user then we are going to ask the user his or her choice then after scanning and understanding what the user choice is we are going to do the appropriate action that is which we'll be implementing so if we see our code first we need to declare that is six temporary variables let's uh, let's just do that that is string usn string name string mm, branch sorry and after that int phone number after this we need another two variables to store the user choice and number of students so that is the user choice we will keep it default as 2 and n students that is number of students equal to 1 so after this we are going to scan uh, we are going to declare a scanner and and the student objects with the maximum students objects of 10 so let's just declare that scanner uh, scanner equal to view scanner student std equal to new student maximum 10 objects okay so if you guys don't know what the scanner does is it's it allows us it's actually a Java function built-in function which allows us to scan different types of values from the user so that's its object so if you guys know C language so it will be it's similar to scanner function in C we are here it is called scanner so we have defined a scanner called scan which will be scanning the inputs from the system input and that is the keyboard and we have declared student objects student array of objects which is maximum objects we can declare here is 10 after that here if you see the code we are displaying the menu to the user so 
let me just copy this statement and explain it to you guys what this menu means so what we are going to use is a print print line statement that is you, here you also you can use the format statement that like we have used here at the bottom so <clears throat> I've used the uh, print line statement so it's very easy now for this case so this contains menu contains two options as like for if you click the user clicks one we can insert en student details if you click two we can display the student details that which have been entered before with that said let's just get into the loop called while you just choice less than equal to two until and unless user choice is less than or equal to two this loop is going to run so inside this loop what we are going to do is we are going to use another print line statement and ask user what's your choice enter your choice so let's just not use it print ln let's just keep it print so the difference between the print line statement and the print statement is when this line executes the automatically the cursor will be moved to the next line but in the print case it won't happen the cursor remains where it is so that is this position where the cursor is blinking right now after this we are going to scan an integer and we are going to store it in user choice variable which we have declared before that is scan next int so <clears throat> the reason why we got it down a little bit is because here you can see at the first line visual studio code has automatically imported a scanner for us which we had forgotten so that's the good part of the vs code which are remembers us and does it automatically for us so to use java built-in functions you need to import packages that is a utility package this in this case that is scanner so it, it has automatically imported for us with that said we have scan the choice of the user and we have stored it now we need to determine what the choice is so we are going to use the switch statement let's just use it switch user choice and by default what we are going to do here is we are going to tell user that program ended I'll tell you why we are going to do it So for the first case, that is as we have told here, for the first case, if user prints enters one, that means user wants to enter n student details at a time. So okay. Now for that, if you see look at the code here, first we are, what we are asking is how many students do you want to enter at the time? That is the n value, right? enter the n value and <clears throat> again we are going to scan uh, input from the user that is this time we are going to use n students and the scanner dot next int after this after the scanning n value we have shown the menu to the user we have scanned his his or her choice after that we are determining the n value now here i forgot to men tell you guys what the scan dot next int does is this basically when you when this statement executes in this place the address of the user choice is mentioned and <clears throat> in this case the scanner scans for the integer that the user is going to enter so if instead of entering an integer user types like h or any other character or uh, you can say special characters it will return an exception so java will take uh, will take care of that in the c case it will run into an infinite loop so with that said after scanning the n value just just get into the next part that is so we have a special line here which has a comment like swallowing slash backward slash n character let's just understand what that is So what this basically what this statement does is when you enter a integer and press enter that is written on macbook 
when you press enter there is a null character which has been automatically placed by your computer even in windows machine linux machine and even a mac os so that particular so that particular null character will be stored in the next string which we will be scanning so i'll demonstrate you in this in the output section so just understand what this statement does and forget it after this what we are going to do is we are going to declare a loop now that's interesting here for int i equal to 0 i less than n students i plus plus so as the first choice determines to the int entering of n student details we are going to start we are going to scan n student details from the user so let's just tell user which um, which student detail is entering correctly i plus 1 this statement tells user which student details he is entering he's or he or her is entering like first student second student and so on after this what we are going to do is we are going to declare the student object like this way okay what this statement does is as we have declared array of objects it will just declare i could create the memory space but it will not have any uh, any type of information in that and what type it is so at this particular i object we are going to assign it as a new student object now we have created an object now we need to scan the inputs from the user first we are going to scan the usn let's just do that system dot out dot print enter usn now to store usn as we have declared the variables above in the class in the main function we are going to store that value in usn equal to scan dot next line so this particular keywords will scan the in, uh, string string characters for us and it will be stored in the us usn variable so we are going to repeat this these two statements for name and branch as well let me just copy paste those here comes is the enter name enter branch let's just change the variable names branch name yeah that's it after this we have one more thing left one more detail to scan that is enter the student phone number so we are going to do the same thing but we are going to use here next end because we are going to scan integer so we are going to use next int the phone number and let's just change this string phone number okay after this <clears throat> again we are swallowing the new line character and we are adding the object okay so let me just explain what this does next line next after that std of i object we are going to call add function and here we are going to pass the variables usn name branch and phone number that's it though this will add the student object for the i student as i said before even this line after scanning an integer so as integer doesn't store the new line character that character will be stored directly in the next time when you are scanning the next string so for example as i said before here we are entering an integer after that the user press enter that null character will directly be stored in the usn so what this java understands is the user has entered the usn so it will not as ask us the usn value itself so I will demonstrate this in the output, uh, output part. So no worries about it. Let me just 
going to the next case that is the displaying all student details so as we have mentioned in the menu when user press two option we need to display all the student details so let me just define another case in the switch statement so what we are going to do is we need another for loop i equal to zero i less than n students i plus plus what we are going to do here is we are going to tell user which student display which student detail we are currently displaying yep. now for the i student for the i student we are going to call the display function so that's it we are going to have done and let us just demonstrate this okay so do we have anything else no yeah the last thing what we have to do is we need to close the scanner outside the while loop okay so let's just get in the output part and let's see how this program works so I have in my terminal it's just a dot Java so to execute Java programs what we need to type is Java space the file name dot Java extension and press enter let's see we have any errors or okay we don't have any errors so this is printing our menu for us as we can see I have print and menu at the 31st line and you can see we have it's showing us the menu with two options that is insert n and display student details and after that in the while loop it's asking us enter your choice so now i am going to insert the first as my choice now first choice refers to as insert n student details so uh, rather than inserting two or three details we are going to put one for this test that is enter one student details so it's asking us the usn of a student let's just type qwerty for this it's just random you can type anything and name <coughs> youtube branch cs phone number you just can type any number and if you press enter it's again asking you to enter the choice because we have as we are in the loop this loop is going to run until the user choice is less than or equal to two and as we have entered the user choice as one so one is less than or equal to two so it's again asking us the choice so this time if we enter two that is the display it will display as the details so here we are seeing first details that is the name <clears throat> that is the usn name branch and the phone number so after this we can see that we have a little bit of bug here that is it is even displaying the default condition of the switch statement and the reason behind that is we have not added the break statement here so with that it will solve the problem it's a minor thing so as i said before uh, let me just demonstrate what this particular line does is so let me just comment this line and see how this affects our program so let me just clear it and rerun the program so as again it's just working entirely normally oh, so I'm going to insert my choice as 1 the n value as so as you can see <coughs> it's asking me the n value so currently the compiler is here so this time we have commented this line so it will not execute and I'm going to put my n value as 1 so here as you can see it's not asking us the usn and the reason because is when i type one and press enter the new line character will directly be stored in the usn so java thinks okay he has already entered the usn so no need of asking him again so it will be stored in the usn variable and it will go to the name so that's the reason why whenever you scan an integer 
you need to add this line as well because next line scans for the string and string can store the new line character so with that said this is the end of the part a section i hope you guys have understood and if you guys don't understand let me know in the comment section i would really love to help you guys and now let's just solve the part b section of the problem one in the part b section of the problem one before solving or writing the code let's just <clears throat> see what the problem statement is so for that um, let me just show you the source code that i have been uploading to my github repository so here is the problem part b of the problem one section so as you can see uh, in the solver solving problem statements in java in the uh, in this repository under program one folder we have another file called part b.java so the problem statement is write a java program to implement the stack using arrays write push pop and display methods to demonstrate it's working so it's nothing but we need to implement stack in java so let's just do that <clears throat> so this time we are going to start by importing a package import java dot scanner and again this time we are going to declare two classes that is part b which will contain the main function of the program and another class will have the stack so for implementation of stack first we are going to declare three variables so we'll see which are those first is final stack so we need this variable to tell our stack that maximum you can contain uh, you can hold around 101 elements and the reason is because the counting starts from 0 to 100 so it will be 101 now next we'll declare an array now the reason why we are declared the top variable you must be knowing this because in it, for implementation of stack we need this so <clears throat> by initially we'll keep it to minus one so let's just now implement the push push function for stack public uh, boolean push So it is a public function which will return a boolean value. I will tell you why we need a boolean and not a void. And it's going to take one parameter because we are going to ask the user which elements he or she wants to enter in the stack. And that element we are going to insert it in the array that we have declared at the line 22. Now, before we directly insert into the stack, we just need to check one condition that is whether the stack is overflow or no whether the stack is full or no so how we are going to do is we are going to check if this dot top equal to max elements minus one then we are going to print saying stack overflow that's it now for this we are going to return false this dot else say for example um, if the stack is not overflow then we are going to insert the element by pre-incrementing the top pointer equal to the element so that's the push function now let's just go to the pop function so 
So same goes for the pop function, but we are not going to uh, accept any parameters for the pop function because we are going to remove the elements. So it will be a public boolean. So the reason why I'm using boolean and not void because in while handling in the menu, I want I need to check whether the stack is overflow or not. So at that time, I will explain to you guys why we need this. So even for pop, <coughs> before directly popping an element from the stack, first we need to check whether the stack is underflow or not. So we are going to do this by checking the top pointer. If it's minus one, I am going to print saying stack underflow else if stack is not underflow we are going to say this dot top minus equal to one now comes the display function Now for the display function again we are going to return a boolean value and it's a public function so before we got start displaying the stack elements we are going we need to check whether it's underflow or not so if there are no elements in the stack we need to display saying stack is underflow so there are no elements so we cannot display any of the elements so we are going to do it the same way as we have done it here so let me just copy and paste it so that's it now if the stack is not underflow we are going to display the stack elements the way we are going to do it is int i equal to this dot top i greater than equal to zero i minus minus again uh, here instead of using the default println function I'm going to use the format function so we want to print an integer here so percentage d is dot i of i now after doing this at last the the way the format function I have already explained is it will just keep printing the array elements one beside each other so after printing all the elements so instead of the cursor going beside the array elements I just want to take the cursor down so the way we are going to do it is system we are just print a new line and say return true so that's it for the display function now let's just come back to the part b where we are going to implement a menu driven main function for menu driven main function let's just begin with by declaring two variables that is in element and end user choice <coughs> let's just have it one by default value so this variable in element we are going to use it for as a parameter to pass in the push argument of push function argument as of stack class and as you can make another statement like say to store the element which user had passed to push in the stack okay so <coughs> this user choice we are going to say uh, store uh, we are going to use it to store like what's the choice the user had selected like is whether it's push pop display so this is same as of what we had done in the part a section so after this so if you look at the code what we have done we have declared two variables and we have declared two objects one is for scan another for stack so let me just copy paste that so okay so in the last in the part a we hadn't imported the scanner so it had directly visual studio code had directly done it for us but this time as we have written that the first line of our program even though it's a 10th line but 
we're going to state as the first line <clears throat> so now with that said we have another line called we have declared a stack and this time it is only a single stack and next we are going to print the u menu to the user so if you look at the menu we have declared it something like this uh, something like this which has three main options one if you if the user presses one it will be a push function if a user presses two it will be a pop function if user presses three it will be a display function i mean when i say display function the those particular functions will be invoked so let me just copy paste that so here it goes after this we are going to build the real stuff so here we are going to get inside a loop less than equal to three just press it while user's choice is less than equal to three we are going to print a statement to the user saying hey what's your choice so let me just make it more clear what enter your choice so until and unless the user choice is less than equal to three we are going to ask the user what is his or her choice so we are going to do it by using the scanner object that we have declared at the line 90 and as we are going to scan the integer visual studio has already suggested us which option we have to use so after this now we have to determine what the user had selected as his or her choice now the reason why we have to do it because it's very simple we need to know which value the user had typed so based on that we can invoke a particular function so if it's a one then user means push function so we are going to again ask user another value saying so as it's a push function we need an element to in enter inside so we are going to scan that element so we are going to ask user enter element after this we are going to store the element again using next int after this <clears throat> we are going to call the stack object and inside stack object we are going to call the push function and we are going to pass element as the parameter after this as the functionality of push function is over we are going to break out again it will come back to the loop and ask the user his or her choice now for the case 2 if user had entered 2 as his or her choice as we know it's a pop function let's just implement that so before we do that uh, we are going to check for a condition saying if stack dot pop equal to true we are going to print a statement saying one element removed from stack So what we are doing here we are going to we are invoking the pop function so if the pop function returns true that means we have um, we have removed an element from the stack if the pop functions returns anything other than true we are going to just break out that is if you look at the our found our pop function we have say uh, we are declare uh, we are even returning the false as our output because if the stack is underflow we are going to say the you know the pop the stack has not been popped that is uh, element has not been removed from the stack because as it is underflow there are no elements so <clears throat> this dot top minus equal to one here we have actually um, declare uh, remove the element from the stack let me just type here return dot true so as you can see even i might have done it here yes so i have done it here as well so after uh, declaring the pointer uh, after decreasing the pointer variable we are 
returning the as true as indicating that we have removed alignment from the stack so to abstract it if the stack pop operation has been successful we are going to print one element removed from the stack else the pop function will handle rest of the cases for us case 3 so if user has entered 3 as his or her option we are going to ask our cache option 3 was yes for display function stack dot display so that's it for the display function and uh, we are now coming to the default section by default we are going to say system dot out dot print lm we are going to tell user program and it break it so outside of our while loop we are going to we are going to close our scanner and it's a good practice actually you need to do that because it will uh, it increases the efficiency of the program so that's the reason why we have to do it and I have saved the program now let's just check the output for this for the output as you can see in my I'm in my terminal that is bash <clears throat> I have pointed to the director directory where I've been writing the code so let me just <clears throat> compile the program saying Java part B dot Java let's see if we have got any errors okay missing return statement at line 71 okay if we just go back to line 71 yes so here we need to write return true because as we know Java is a very strict language we need to follow some rules so let's just invoke it again okay so here we have our output it has just if you see it's asking us first it's printing the menu with appropriate format and new line characters now it's inside the loop and asking us hey what's your choice now for testing let's just push an element say we are going to insert 10 now again I have inserted 10 as my element it is going to break and come outside the switch statement again it sees the user choice is less than equal to 3 again so it's inside the loop and ask me again my choice this time again I'm going to insert and push I'm going to push an element into stack so it will be a 1 and it's going to be asking enter element this time I'm going to enter 20 as my value again this time let's just <coughs> invoke the display function that is 3 so as you can see as we know uh, it's displaying the contents of the stack as we know the uh, what you can say the stack uses <coughs> the format of last in first out so I thought of displaying it in the reverse order so it will be very easy when we remove an element from the stack and now if we let's just insert one more element that is 30 and display so here as you can see we have uh, inserted the recently element uh, the recently ele added elements will be at the top so if you guess our top, top a pointer will be at 0 1 2 so our top pointer will be at 2 now so till it goes 100 or 100 and uh, okay till 100 we can enter the values because as you can see we have entered a stack stack uh, static variable here saying maximum elements in stack array is 100 okay so now let's just try to pop an element from the stack let me just add 2 here so as you can see it has successfully removed an element from the stack so it just showing me one element removed from the stack if we just go back to our code we have written the statement like if stack dot pop equal to true then one element has been removed from the stack so to actually check if it has removed <coughs> enter your choice let's just display it again so 
last in first out operation has been first uh, performed so before we had these elements that is 30 20 10 now we have 20 and 10 now let's just actually i wanted to check the stack underflow condition whether it will work or not let's just check that so for that to um, do that perform to check we need to continuously pop the elements and see whether it works or not so again we have okay now this time it might have removed the 20 yes again let's just remove now this time if you try to invoke the display function it will say stack underflow as we know we don't have any elements <coughs> and if you invoke the pop function it will say stack underflow the reason because it's very obvious we have removed all the elements from the stack so there are no more elements to remove nor we can push into set so that's the end of the program with that said i'll see in the next problem statement if you guys like this video like it share it tag it with tag your friends in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think i'll see in the next video until then have a great day